Hello everyone and welcome back to Vampire Folklore. So today I'm going to visit the Vampire Diaries and take a look at the 8 different types of vampires from the series. Trust me guys, I didn't know there was even 8 different kinds of vampire until the idea came to me. I sat there and thought, actually how many kinds of vampire are there in the show? And I actually started researching the topic and bam we've got a video for you today. The Vampire Diaries is probably the most popular vampire book to screen TV series of all time. It has a massive legion of fans with many of them still not over the fact that it's been 5 years since the show ended. So as I said, there are 8 different kinds of vampires from this series and I'm going to take you through them all in as much detail as possible. So let's start it off with the first vampire on the list and that's the standard vampire. Pretty vanilla I know but look we have got to start somewhere don't we? Now I don't really like the term standard, it makes the standard vampire seem boring doesn't it? But let me assure you a normal standard vampire is far from boring. They're quite common throughout the series but what stands out to me is that they really lack substance or guidance like they could be a week old and do something stupid to get themselves killed. There are some pretty awesome standard vampires, still can't get used to that word but yeah I keep saying it. Catherine Pierce, Caroline Forbes, Lexi Branson, just a small list of extremely powerful vampires who can pack a punch when necessary. These vampires have super speed, super agility, super senses, incredibly durable, rapid healing factor, clearly immortal of course, emotions completely enhanced beyond any reasonable doubt and mind compulsion. They basically represent what it means to have a standard transition into a vampire without any hiccups. Let's just take a quick look at the list I mentioned for a moment. Lexi Branson, over 400 years old, seriously powerful, stronger than Damon and Stefan combined. With Lexi's power also comes wisdom, which she allowed to guide her quite cleverly, shown by her loving friendship with Stefan and willingness to help him in his time of need. This kind of vampire also has the natural vampire weaknesses, like the sunlight, vervain, fire, and the good old heart extraction. Next up is a type of vampire that I actually dedicated an entire video to and that is of course the Ripper. Ripper vampires are both natural and can also be created. They are extremely aggressive, predatory vampires who channel the overwhelming euphoric sensation of drinking blood into the actual attack on their victims. The surprise with Rippers is that they are far more savage and beast-like than their human appearance suggests. They growl, hiss, snarl and curl their lips back bearing their fangs as signs of aggression when provoked. Unlike the average vampire, the enjoyment of hunting and terrorizing humans is far more entertaining to rippers as they destroy the lives and sever the limbs of humans without a moment's hesitation or remorse. Despite their nature and reputation, some rippers are also capable of human emotions such as compassion, love, protection, respect and even self-control. Yeah, believe it or not, self-control, although not without consequence. We've seen Stefan lose himself to his Ripper bloodlust, gaining the nickname of the Ripper of Monterey. To remind himself and more so to punish himself for his actions, he actually kept a list of every single person he's ever killed with the hope that as the list grows it will finally make him see sense to stop feeding on humans as the result is always the same. Even his mother Lily managed to get herself banished to a prison world for her uncontrollable killing spree. We've even seen Damon be infected with a version of the Ripper virus but subsequently lusted after vampire blood instead of human. I think the Ripper persona or trait or virus or whatever you want to call it really helps diversify the vampires and shows that even our own fan favourites like Stefan or Rebecca were susceptible to surrendering their own human morals that made them so likeable in the first place. Now I just mentioned Damon Salvatore was once a Ripper vampire but not of his own accord. It wasn't a hereditary condition like his brothers. Damon was actually infected with a manufactured engineered Ripper virus that caused him to feed on his own kind, like a way of using vampires to eradicate vampires. Quite clever if you actually think about it. Anyway Damon was infected by an Augustine doctor by the name of Wes Maxfield but that wasn't actually the first time he was a prisoner under the Augustine Society. The Augustine Society were a secret organization who were widely aware of the supernatural and they experimented on vampires. While intending to use what they learned in their research to benefit humanity such as using vampire blood to cure fatal illness. However in order to accomplish this goal the doctors captured and tortured vampires by doing experiments on them to test their theories. 
Damon Salvatore was captured in the 1950s and experimented on daily by Dr. Whitmore. It was in captivity that he met another vampire by the name of Lorenzo St. John, who had been there for roughly about 10 years. The two planned quite a well thought out escape until the plan went wrong when Enzo's cage fused shut due to the heat of the surrounding fire. In what I can only describe as the most heartbreaking scene of the season and arguably the show, Damon switched off his humanity in order to allow himself to escape as his conscience would not allow him to leave Enzo. The latter remained in captivity for another 60 years until he finally escaped with the help of Damon. As I mentioned, Augustine vampires were biological weapons, programs to target other vampires. As soon as an Augustine vampire smells vampire blood, especially when they had not fed in some time, they will temporarily lose their personality and feelings towards anything as they're consumed by their desire to feed on vampires. Their bloodlust became so overwhelming when they began feeding on vampires that it was near impossible to stop which is what earned it the name Ripper Compound. The Augustine vampire fed so heavily that they ripped off the head of the vampire of whom they were actually feeding on. The next type of vampire on our list is one of the most interesting and recognisable. Of course, it's the original vampire aka the first vampire or vampires ever created. The Vampire Diaries doesn't stem the creation of the species back to one vampire, but an entire family of them. Niklaus, Elijah, Cole, Finn and Rebecca were the first vampires to ever exist and were made so as the result of a dark, twisted version of Ketsia's immortality spell. The original vampires has all the powers of the standard vampire and then some. Because they are the first of their kind, they're the oldest of their kind which automatically makes them the strongest of their kind. As the older a vampire is, the stronger they are. They cannot die, I mean literally cannot die piercing their heart or even extracting it, another will grow back. An original can be temporarily subdued with the white oak dagger, but it only remains effective while it's inserted into the original's heart. In order to destroy an original vampire, you need to locate the white oak stake made from the white oak tree of which all five originals were severely vulnerable to, and if any of the five originals die, then the lion they sired will also die with them. Such was the case of Finn after he was staked. The vampires would have to be unlinked from their line in order to prevent the genocidal episode eradicating what could be thousands of vampires. Originals have the additional power of being able to compel other vampires to do whatever the hell they please. Klaus was quite frequent in displaying that ability, just ask poor Stefan Salvatore. They are also quite vulnerable to powerful forms of magic, which was also the case with standard vampires too. On a personal note, I've noticed that everyone seems to have their own favourite original vampire. I think Elijah is the coolest out of the bunch, but make sure to let me know your favourite original vampire in the comment section below. Let's move on to what I'd say is my favourite type of vampire, the heretic. I have to say, when the heretics came into the show, it really refreshed and revitalised the series because at that point, for me, I was thinking... Well, what else can they really do here? Like, what's the next challenge for Stefan and the gang? Then the heretics show up. For those of you who are unaware, although I'm sure you all know anyway, a heretic is a witch-vampire hybrid. During their human lives, the witches were known as siphoners. A siphon is a witch born without the ability to channel magic unless it's siphoned from a supernatural source. Question of the day, what is a really good example of a supernatural source of magic? A vampire, of course. Turn a heretic into a vampire, then they can siphon the magic from themselves and it's if they were now born as unchallenged witches without any issues when it comes to conjuring magic. Oh, and the additional small benefit of being a vampire and having super strength, super speed, agility, with all the vampire trimmings too. This hybrid breed was a massive threat to anyone who opposed him and it's no surprise that Julian manipulated his coven individually in order to keep them all together permanently. Heretics also have the ability not to just siphon magic from within themselves, but they can also remove foreign magic from their bodies, for example a werewolf bite, which is fatal to a vampire, but as we've seen Kai Parker do, he siphoned the venom out of his body after Tyler Lockwood bit him. As I said, I really loved the heretics when they came on the scene, it really spiced up the series for me and they are my favourite type of vampire. So I've just spoken about the witch vampire hybrid known as a heretic but let's talk about 
the original vampire werewolf hybrid, Niklaus Michelson. Klaus was actually born a werewolf due to his mother's extramarital affair with a werewolf in a village nearby. Klaus was unaware that he would be uniting two different species under one bloodline. He was the ultimate apex predator. His werewolf side made him absolutely lethal to all vampires, even his own family. Never mind the fact that he could basically dismantle any vampire challenge, Klaus wasn't happy that he was the only hybrid. Despite knowing how powerful he was, he still felt alone because he was the only one of his kind. No matter how many times he tried to create more hybrids, he failed because, well, it's simple. A werewolf was not meant to become a vampire and share genetic traits. The only way that a new hybrid could indeed be made was with the use of doppelganger blood or the blood of Hope Michelson. Hybrids are extremely powerful beings, have both strengths of both species, they can also walk in a day without the need for a daylight ring, they have toxic venom that can kill even the strongest of vampires, and were not as vulnerable to the weaknesses that affect regular vampires. For the seventh type of vampire in the Vampire Diary series, we're going back to the original vampire, except it's not just the original vampire. This is an enhanced, improved, strengthened version with some changes made to the immortality spell. So, what changes are these? What am I talking about? Well, this enhanced original vampire, that's the term used to describe the type of original vampire Alorik Saltzman became when Esther recast the immortality spell in order to turn him. She made changes such as binding Alaric's life to a doppelganger, whereas the other original's immortality was granted by the White Oak Tree. This meant that he could not be killed at all as long as Elena lived, thus meaning even the White Oak Stake or the White Oak Ash Daggers would have no effect on him whatsoever. The only way he could die is if someone killed Elena, which is why he had to guard her life. His darker personality was enhanced as well, as Alaric's true personality is now gone completely, replaced by the psychotic, vampire-hating serial killer that was created as a result of using the Gilbert Ring to come back to life too many times, along with Esther manipulating his mind every time he died. Alaric was created to become the ultimate hunter, capable of eradicating the vampire species as a whole. Additionally, he was endowed with superhuman physical abilities such as strength, speed, agility, durability, his healing powers and also the power of mind control. Given the relatively short time this being was in existence, it remains unknown if their physical or mental abilities grew stronger with age and experience. The enhanced original vampire was only created for one reason, to eradicate its target. Just when you think the enhanced original vampire is top of the food chain, you can think again because that spot belongs to the upgraded original vampire. This was a term used to describe the type of upgraded original vampire that both Lucien Castle and Marcel Girard became when a reversed engineered immortality spell was used to turn them. It was also prophesied to be the undoing of the Michelson siblings and could have been if Marcel wanted it to be that way. So how the hell was this spell even created? What does it take to become the most powerful, indestructible vampire to ever walk the earth? It's basically a modified version of Esther's original vampire spell, which was a darker, twisted version of the original immortality spell. So this spell was cast on hollowed ground where Esther created the first originals. Combining a piece of the white oak, Freya's blood and an engineered strain of werewolf venom from each of the seven original werewolf bloodlines, the spell created a serum, enough for two doses. There's nothing really basic about that at all, is there? They're stronger, faster, more agile and durable than any vampire, even the originals. But their most powerful weapon is the bite that they possess. Now it's deadly enough to kill even an original vampire and consequently all non-original vampires. Nothing can cure the venom but the blood of the upgraded vampire itself. Even Klaus's blood. Although it helps with symptoms, it cannot stop the fatality that awaits the bite victim. The person who holds this role is of course Marcel Girard, who I think many of us can agree is a much better candidate than Lucien, as Marcel does govern the vampires with a proper accord. There you have it guys, that is the 8 different types of vampires from the Vampire Diaries. Let me know what kind of videos you want to see come from the channel. Thanks very much for watching. Hit that like button, it goes a long way. And remember, if you want to join the Vampire Folklore family, you can do so by clicking that subscribe button and turning those notifications on. And then you'll never miss another upload again. 
thanks again for watching and I'll see you all very soon.